Assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone. My name is Fatima Mustanse. I was a medical student not too long ago. Um, I'm a very recent graduate of the Khan University, class of 2019. And I'm really honored to be here today to be given the opportunity to talk about something that is important not only to me, but also to many young doctors and medical students. And that is the challenges that female medical students in Pakistan face on their pursuit of a career in neurosurgery. So I became interested in neurosurgery in my third year of medical school. And I spent the next three years um, using all my free time, the time that I was given off for electives to rotate in clinics, wards and ORs in AQ and elsewhere. Until I finally realized that I couldn't see myself doing anything but neurosurgery. Now, fortunately for me, for the most part, whenever an attending a resident or a fellow medical student would ask me what I wanted to do post-graduation, um, I'd usually be met with a casual, oh, okay, or even a pleasantly <coughs> surprised, oh, how exciting. But there have been just a handful of times, and I remember them well, when the reply has been a little more apprehensive, when the attending or the other, on the other end has said something like neurosurgery, Hmm, that's great, but you have a plan B, right? And by plan B, they really mean plan A, when this naive medical student forgoes her dreams of becoming a neurosurgeon and settles for a less demanding career. And I know that my experiences aren't unique. I'm sure many young doctors have faced something similar, if not the same. So over the last few decades, the number of female medical students has surpassed the number of male medical students. But somehow this shift hasn't translated into postgraduate training, especially in surgery. Um, statistics show that less than one third of surgeons globally are female. And so while researching and brainstorming, these are some of the challenges that I found to be uh, deterrents for women who want to pursue careers in neurosurgery. But if you notice that, um, if you look at these challenges, you'll find that a lot of them, if not all of them, are applicable to any surgical subspecialty, any career in medicine, or even careers outside of medicine. So what I want to do is talk about some concepts that I think are important because they act as impediments to a young female medic's career in neurosurgery, but that also ultimately tie in in some way to these very real and practical challenges. So it's not often in our society that circumstances, families, and teachers push young women into careers like neurosurgery because of things like the demanding lifestyle and the personal sacrifices that must be made. This coupled with the fact that the road to neurosurgery is so long and daunting often puts young women off before they've even started. And so when moments of self-doubt emerge, as they often do, I think women in Pakistan find that they have an easy exit, um, a sort of exit strategy that allows them to settle for a less demanding career or sometimes no career at all. And it's unfortunate because I think uh, that these are certain things that girls may have been ingrained with since childhood. For example, the math teacher saying that girls are not as good at math as boys or the sports teacher saying, why don't you play throw ball instead of cricket? And we grow up with some of these behaviors uh, as we go into our professional lives. And so when the going gets tough, take the easy way out, settle for something less rigorous. And I think that this paradigm ties in well with the concept of low expectations for women in Pakistan. In a society where women aren't expected to fulfill the role of breadwinners and where higher education of this sort is a privilege for so many, Achieving the title of neurosurgeon isn't something that is routinely expected of young women. Only a few weeks ago, I went to visit a family friend who also happens to be a very senior family physician. Um, he congratulated me on becoming a doctor. He shook my hand really warmly. Uh, and upon hearing that I wanted to be a neurosurgeon, promptly remarked, you too have the look of a family physician. Now, I know that he didn't mean to put me down and I wasn't offended, but it did make me think why is it that whenever young women in our society voice their ambitions, they often elicit this knee-jerk response, which is sometimes harmless and meant as a joke, but sometimes also as a warning. And I am fortunate in that my immediate support system that consists of my family up to my mentors doesn't let instances like this dissuade me from my ultimate goal. But I can imagine that there are families out there 
who heed these warnings and eventually impress it upon their daughters to rethink their professional path. Uh, another problem that we face um, based on all of this is that statistically speaking, you won't see a lot of young women lining up to become neurosurgeons all over the world and in our country as well. And what we end up with is a paucity of neurosurgeon role models in the field. This only serves to perpetuate the hurdles that women in neurosurgery face. And more so when young female medical students such as myself uh, don't see a lot of women represented in neurosurgery all the way up to the faculty level, they're discouraged from pursuing a career in such a male dominated field. But I also want to shed some light on a lesser thought about uh, fact that is more applicable to younger medical students and recent graduates. That is the fact that we don't have an adequate peer support system or network. People my own age or close to my own age with whom I can share struggles that are only unique to people at the cusp of their careers and with whom I can collaborate with to find solutions to these problems. So I've talked about all of the challenges that um, women in Pakistan may face on their road to neurosurgery, but I think it's equally important to address um, steps that we can take to mitigate these challenges. And I think that medical students play the most critical role in this. We must find ways to encourage and nurture medical students who show an interest in neurosurgery, especially young women, because 20 years from now, they will become the future cohort of neurosurgeon role models. Furthermore, I think it's not enough anymore just to address individual problems. We must adopt a more holistic approach, which I know might sound a little cliched, but something that actually involves reevaluating cultural stereotypes that say that women cannot handle tough jobs. I think we need to inculcate in ourselves an attitude of self-belief and of doggedness to keep our heads down and keep working. Eventually people will see your work and will accept you. And most of all, move on past those who say that you can't do it. I think it's very encouraging to see that despite all of these challenges, women in Pakistan continue to strive to make their place as neurosurgeons in hospitals across the country. And as Dr. Darbar mentioned in her report earlier, uh, we have some hopeful statistics. The gap between men, uh, male and female neurosurgery residents is narrowing down in Pakistan. And so the future looks pretty good. So I want to end with a quote as is often the norm. Um, and, but this is from someone who happens to be my mother's role model. So I recently read that Hillary Clinton is considering running for president. I mean, she hasn't entirely ruled out running for president a third time. And that really made me want to quote her. So she says, women are agents of change. We are drivers of progress. We are makers of peace. All we need is a fighting chance. And so with that, I leave you. Thank you very much for your time.